Today we're going to be looking at lesson 1.08, putting it all together. So this is the last lesson in unit 1, and we're going to look at filling in some geometric sequences as well as tying in everything we've learned about sequences so far. So today's objective is, given the sequence in any form, I can correctly write the missing terms and write or draw it in another form. And here's some things to think about. What representations do I prefer to use for modeling sequences? And how can I change a sequence into a form that makes sense to me? What sequence forms make the most sense to you? Do graphs work? Do equations work? Maybe you prefer tables. So first, let's start off by finding the missing terms. This should look familiar. We started this in the last lesson, 107. So we're finding the missing terms for this arithmetic sequence. Remember, we were doing the difference over the number of steps. So here we have one, two, three steps. And our difference is going to be 13 minus 7. So the difference between these two numbers, 13 and 7, over 3 steps. 13 minus 7 is 6 over 3, and that evaluates to 2. So our step here is going to be 2 each time, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. We call that the common difference in an arithmetic sequence. And let's see if it worked. We do 7 plus 2, we get 9. 9 plus 2, we get 11. So that was just a quick review of how we found missing terms in an arithmetic sequence. But now we're going to look at finding missing terms in a geometric sequence. How do you suppose we do this? So now instead of adding at each step, we're going to need to multiply something at each step. So maybe let's just call this R, because we don't know what it is, but we know it's the common ratio, so R can stand for ratio. And we can set this up like this, 4 times R times R equals 36. So we just started here, we multiplied by R once, multiplied by r twice, and we got to 36. So that's how we set this up. Now we have a more common way of condensing this r times r, right? We talked about this a few lessons ago. We condense this as r squared. So 4r squared equals 36. And then we can actually solve this. We can divide both sides by 4. We get r squared equals 9. And then to solve from here, to get rid of that square, we need to take the square root. Square root of both sides. Those squares go away, and we get r equals 3. So we can multiply by 3, it sounds like. Let's give it a try. Multiply by 3. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 3 is indeed 36. Interesting. So what steps did we end up taking there? It looks like we did a 36 divided by 4. We did the ratio of the two numbers instead of the difference. And then we ended up doing a root here, a square root. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's see if we can extend that to geometric sequences with more missing terms. Let's find the missing terms for this geometric sequence. Now we have two missing terms. We can set this up a similar way. We're going to multiply by r three times. We get 5 r cubed this time, right? r times r times r is cubed equals 40. We divide both sides by 5. 
we get r cubed equals 40 divided by 5 is 8. And now we need to do a special root. Instead of doing a square root that we're used to, we need to do a cube root to get rid of that cube. We do that on both sides. Cube root. So those will cancel. Now how do we calculate this cube root? For 8, we might actually know it off the top of our heads. The cube root of 8 is 2. That's a pretty common one. But in general, cube roots and higher roots are going to be really difficult to do in our head. So we're actually going to use a calculator for this. And these are the buttons on the calculator you're going to be looking to use. They're called n root buttons. It might look something like this, or it might have a, a variable under the root. It might be empty under the root, something like that. These all do the same thing. And what we're talking about here is we're going to do, we're going to put in a number for n. Actually, in this case, we're doing three, right? We're going to put in a number for n, and then we're going to put a number in under the root. So in this case, we're doing the three root of eight. So if I put three root of eight into my calculator, and just so you know, that might be a secondary function or in the functions settings. So you might have to look through your calculator, but most scientific calculators will have this button. So I do three root of eight and I do indeed get two on this problem. So here we get R equals two. Let's see if that works. We multiply by 2 at each step. We get 5 times 2 is 10. 10 times 2 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. It did work. So once again, we are doing this sort of ratio first. We're doing the ratio of the two numbers. And then we're taking the root of it. But instead of a square root, this time we did a 3 root. Hmm. Let's see if that pattern continues. So now let's find the missing terms for this geometric sequence. We're missing three terms now. Pause the video and see if you can set this one up on your own. So we are going to do four steps, it looks like, to get up to the final number. So multiply by r each time. So we could say 3r, there are 1, 2, 3, 4 of them. So 3r to the fourth equals 768. Divide both sides by 3. We get r to the fourth equals 768 divided by 3 is 256 in my calculator. And now we need to take looks like a 4 root to get rid of this fourth exponent. So we're going to take a 4 root, and that's going to cancel. We'll take a 4 root of 256. Once again, I need to put this in my calculator. I have no idea what that is in my head. So 4 root 256, I get r equals 4. Let's see if that works. 3 times 4 equals 12. 12 times 4 is 48. 48 times 4 is 192. And 192 times 4 looks like it is 768. So it worked. If we multiply by 4 at each step, then we do get to that final number. And that's how we found all these individual numbers. So we can generalize that method that we just used for geometric sequences by doing the ratio of the two numbers rooted by the number of steps. 
Now this is in contrast to the pattern we saw in arithmetic sequences, where remember we were doing the difference divided by the number of steps. Now, if memorizing these helps, you can totally do that. But remember, you can always reason it out as well. You can just say we're either adding r every time, we're adding a number every time, or we're multiplying a number every time. And you can always get a formula out of that. You can always get an equation out of that and then solve it. So that is how we find the missing terms for a geometric sequence. So now we are going to look at pulling everything together and we're going to be sequence detectives. You're going to be given some information about a sequence and your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to tell me as much as you can about that sequence. You can tell me what type of sequence it is, the constant difference or... Why does that say constant? That should say common. <laughs> The common difference or ratio, common. Any missing terms, a picture, a table, a graph. Interesting what this might look like if we graphed it. An equation. We've talked about equations quite a lot. Maybe we can come up with equations. Or even a story. Just a quick reminder on what these equations look like. Remember, these were our steps for arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences. For arithmetic, we're using slope-intercept form. For geometric, we're using this exponential form. So here is our first sequence. The first five terms of the sequence are 0, negative 6, negative 12, 18, or negative 18, and negative 24. What do we know about the sequence? Pause the video, write down everything you can about the sequence. Okay, so we've noticed this is maybe going down by six every time. This tells us we have a common difference. We're adding negative six each time. We know that the first term is 0. Because we have a common difference and a first term, we can write an equation. Remember, this is the form mx plus b, where m is the common difference and b is the value at 0. So our equation here is going to be f of x equals negative 6x plus 0. which is just the same as negative 6x because plus 0 doesn't really do anything. What about a graph? What would a graph of this look like? Let me put some axes there. Well, let's see, it would be a straight line since it's an arithmetic sequence. And it would have a negative slope. <coughs> and it's it would intersect at 0, 0, because that's our y-intercept here, y at 0. So it would look something like that. So that's just a very rough picture of what it would look like, but that is what the graph would be. It would be a downward slope with a straight line. Nice, so we came up with a lot of information about this sequence. Let's try another one. The first term of the sequence is 5, and the constant ratio is 3. Pause the video. Write down everything you know about this sequence. OK. So let's see. It has a constant. Once again, this should be common. Some, uh, some people will use those terms interchangeably. You might see that from time to time. A constant ratio is the same thing as the common ratio. So since it has a common ratio, we know it is a geometric sequence. It's going to be multiplying at each step. 
Let's see, we could do a table. A table might help us visualize this a little bit. So the this is the number of terms and this is the value. And the first term is five. We could call that term zero if we wanted to. We could just start at zero, step zero. And the constant ratio, common ratio is three. So we're gonna multiply by three. The next term is gonna be 15. The following term is going to be 45. The following term is going to be 45 times 3, which is 135. So we can see it's growing quite rapidly. What would a graph of this look like? Let's see, it looks like we'd start at 5, right about there. And then it would start growing, and then it start growing faster and faster and faster. This would be a curve, which we're used to on geometric sequences. Geometric sequences make curves. And this one would be going up. So we made a table, we made a graph. How about an equation? Can we make an equation from this? For geometric sequences, we use a times b to the x where a is a value at zero, and b is our common ratio. So in this case, our value at zero is five. You can see that up here, right there. And our common ratio, they told us in the problem, is three. So then we know that our overall equation here is going to be five, times 3 to the x. So we figured out the type of sequence. The, we, they told us the common difference. We figured out a table, a graph, an equation. So much information. We're so good at this. All right, let's look at another one. This is the graph of a sequence. What can you tell me about it? Well, we see that it's a straight line, so what type of sequence would that be? It's going to be an arithmetic sequence. Looks like it's going down, so it's going down. How about the slope? Do we know what the slope of this line is? How do we find that out? We can take a point that crosses at intersecting lines and another one, and we can find the rise over run. That's our formula for slope. So we're going to go down to, we're going to go right three in this case. So our rise is negative two, our run is three. Rise we mean up and down, run we, we mean left and right. So we know our slope is negative two-thirds. Incidentally, that's also our common difference for an arithmetic sequence. Same thing as a slope, also equals negative two-thirds. Hmm, well, could we make an equation now? We have the slope. We use slope-intercept form for arithmetic equations, mx plus b. We have the slope, that's our m. What is our b? b is the y-intercept, so we need to go find what that is, where it crosses the y-axis. Looks like our b here is 11. So m is negative 2 thirds b is 11, and our overall equation will be f of x equals negative 2 thirds x plus 11. So from that graph, just by itself, we got the type of sequence, the common difference, the slope, the y-intercept, and an equation. Amazing! Let's look at one more here. The equation for the sequence is f of n equals negative 10 times 3 to the n. So they're giving us an equation this time. 
Tell me more about this sequence. What can you tell me? Well, let's see, it looks like it's in this A times B to the N format, which tells us it's geometric, right? And we know that the A here is the value at zero, and B is the common ratio. So there's our A. A is negative 10 and B is 3. So our value at 0 is negative 10. And our common ratio, the common ratio is 3. We could make a table. Now, my, my reason for making a table is, like, I kind of want to make a graph. I want to know what this looks like. And my intuition tells me that maybe this graph is going to be going down. But I know that geometric sequences have been a little bit weird. Sometimes they go down. Sometimes they kind of oscillate back and forth. And I'm not sure which one this one is. So I'm just going to make a table. And that will help me figure it out. So I'm going to do n and f of n, our input and our output. And at 0, I have negative 10 times 3 to the 0, which is just negative 10 times 1, which equals negative 10. At 1, I have negative 10 times 3 to the 1, negative 10 times 3, which is negative 30. At 2, I have negative 10 times 3 squared. That is negative 10 times 3 squared is 9, so I get negative 90. At 3, I have negative 10 times 3 to the third. That's negative 10 times 27, negative 270. So you can see our values start negative, negative 10, and they start getting much larger negative very fast. Negative 30, negative 90, negative 270. So what we would expect this graph to look like, it would start here, let's see, it would start somewhere at like negative 10, and then it's going to go down, and then go down faster and faster. So based on that equation, we got the type of sequence, the value at zero, the common ratio, a table, a graph, Amazing! We know so much about sequences, given just a little bit of information. So that wraps up today's objective. Given a sequence in any form, I can correctly write the missing terms. We did that with geometric sequences today. And I can write or draw it in another form in two out of two problems. So we were able to switch between tables, equations, graphs, descriptions, all kinds of things in ways to describe sequences.